Hey there! Hello! And once again, welcome to BioPandit, your one-stop comprehensive bioinformatics training platform. I am delighted to introduce myself as Saurav, your very own Mahapandit, and today I am going to talk about DNA supercoiling. In our video on DNA topology, we discussed that a DNA segment constrained in such a way that its ends cannot rotate freely is called a topological domain. Topology of such a DNA segment can be efficiently described by three parameters, linking number, twist, and ripe. Linking number represents the algebraic sum of all the intersections made by one DNA strand across the imaginary surface defined by another DNA strand. This parameter is always an integer and is topologically invariant. Topologically invariant means for a given topological domain, linking number is always fixed. It cannot be changed without breaking at least one DNA chain. Twist represents the total number of helical terms in a topological domain. Twist is topologically variant and is not necessarily an integer. Topologically variant here means you can alter the twist by forcibly separating the two strands. Wide measures the overall shape of a DNA molecule, such as how the double helix coils upon itself. Wide is not necessarily an integer and is topologically variant just like twist. Linking number is the sum of writhe and twist for any DNA topological domain. This means writhe and twist complement each other to keep linking number invariant. If twist reduces, writhe increases. Now, what is a supercoil? Imagine a telephone wire. This is what you can call a coil and this is what you can consider a supercoil. A supercoil is a coil that coils upon itself. An attempt to pull apart the strands of a twisted rope results in increased twisting in the distant strands and ultimately in the coiling of the rope upon itself. The twisting of the rope will tighten ahead of the separating strands and this process will soon stop any further separation of the strands. Something like this happens during DNA replication when DNA polymerase enzymes pull apart the double helix. This coiling and tangling of the rope or DNA is the process of supercoiling. So you see guys, the process of introducing supercoiling into a DNA molecule reduces or increases the number of helical turns trapped into that topological domain. This further changes the linking number of the closed circular DNA. In other words, a change in supercoiling in a given topological domain is accompanied by a change in the linking number. How to measure the extent of supercoil? Well, it is measured by the difference of linking number between the supercoiled state and the hypothetically unconstrained state of a DNA molecule. An unconstrained DNA molecule has no torsional strain. It does not coil upon itself. So, its writhe is zero. At this stage, the linking number is simply given by the twist, that is, the total number of base pairs divided by the number of base pairs per turn. This is called the relaxed state linking number LK0. You can easily understand that LK0 is not necessarily an integer, which means it is not a true linking number at all. But still, it serves as a reference point for the measurement of the level of supercoiling. A supercoil DNA is any DNA having a linking number different from this relaxed state linking number LK0. A quantitative measure of DNA supercoiling is called the linking difference. If the linking difference is positive, the topological domain is called positively supercoiled and the DNA is somewhat over wound compared to the relaxed DNA. If the linking difference is negative, the topological domain is called negatively supercoiled and the DNA is somewhat over wound compared to the relaxed DNA. Remember guys that most DNAs in vivo are negatively supercoiled. The introduction of supercoils into a DNA molecule corresponds to the introduction of torsional stress. If you have two DNA molecules of different lengths and you introduce identical linking number in each of them, 
the smaller DNA will have more torsional stress than the larger one. So, it is important to normalize their linking number difference by their respective LK0 values. This parameter is called the specific linking difference. This gives a measure of the extent of supercoiling that can be used for comparisons between DNA molecules. There are two principal conformations of supercoiled DNA, solenoidal and plectonemic. Solenoidal supercoiling is mainly observed in prokaryotes where the DNA chain supercoils onto itself and this conformation is maintained by nucleoid associated proteins. Plectonemic supercoiling is mainly observed in eukaryotes and this conformation arises as DNA is wrapped around the nucleosomal particles. Supercoiling can be of two types, right-handed and left-handed. You can just see the trajectories of the DNA helix axis in each case. Both types of supercoiling can be observed in real DNA, no matter whether it is solenoidal or plectonemic. Let us finish this talk by discussing some thermodynamic aspects of supercoiling. Since supercoiling induces serious torsional and bending deformations into DNA, it is energetically unfavorable. This is why in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic systems, a wide variety of nuclear proteins are there to bind the DNA and to maintain the supercoiling state. If the free energies of these protein DNA and protein protein interactions compensate the free energy cost of supercoiling, the structure is stable. This is the basic thermodynamic principle of chromosome formation in eukaryotes.